Hello YouTube. I know it has been too long since I made a video. Um, it's been 10 months since I posted anything on this channel and I feel really bad about that. I, <laughs> I was not inspired and I was having trouble with my quality of recordings. Um, but I'm hoping I might be able to start posting again soon. Um, I've just had my 18th birthday a couple months ago, and who knows, I might take up YouTube a little more seriously from here on out. I might not. <laughs> I make no promises. Um, the reason I wanted to make this video in particular is because I was in a stream with the YouTuber Zoe Mariner, whose uh, links I will put in the description, and I was talking to a couple of other people in the stream chat, and it had come up that I'm in a wheelchair, and it occurred to me that I might not have really said anything about that on my channel, so a lot of people were curious as to why, and I gave them a pretty brief explanation in the chat, but given I was limited to 200 characters per message, it was really hard to tell the full extent of a, what is a very long story. So, I asked if they wanted me to make a video that was a little more specific and a little more in-depth, and they said yes. So, that's what I'm going to do. Um, shout out to Spellbell if you're watching this. <laughs> you were in that stream. Um, <laughs> I, I have an illness, and... There is no name for this illness. I wish there were. <laughs> um, as of yet, I am undiagnosed. Um, it started a few months before my 11th birthday. I want to say three months before I turned 11 was when the symptoms started to show. Um, the first symptoms to present themselves were a uh, pretty nasty limp um, and back pain and knee pain. So I couldn't quite figure out why I was having uh, these pains, so I told my mom about them. And at first my mom wasn't really sure if she could believe me because we had just made a pretty huge move. We had left um, my hometown and we'd moved to a different town in a different state. And I was a bit of a dramatic kid. <laughs> I had tendencies to blow things out of proportion and I was very melodramatic, and I didn't take pain very well, so like, I would stub my toe and yell about how I'd broken my foot. I was a very dramatic child. So my mom decided she was gonna watch me for a little while, um, see if I was still limping after a little while, and it wasn't until I was walking to school one day that she watched me walk to school, and all of a sudden she realized, I guess, that I didn't know she was watching me, and I was still limping. So if I were being overdramatic, it, it just was very unlikely that I was being overdramatic. So my mom took me in to a doctor, and the nearest doctor was a whole town away, about an hour's and change drive out of our town, um, because that was the kind of town we had moved into. Um, for anyone in Arizona, it was Winslow, Arizona. I don't know if anyone's been, but the nearest doctor who could really treat me and the nearest PCP would have been in Flagstaff, Arizona. So we went there, they recommended physical therapy, and I started physical therapy. Um, this enabled me to start walking without the limp again, but the only problem was that I could no longer run. Um, at that point, I was unable to run because just the steps hurt. It was like taking a step felt like a thunderclap going through my body, and it was hard enough to walk slowly, so trying to run was out of the question. Um, and that caused, that caused a spiral of things that are related to my life as a whole, but not necessarily to my condition, so I won't mention them. If you want me to go into my history with bullying and everything that happened as a result of that, I will go into it in another video, maybe do a series of story times about my life, but for now, I will stick to my condition. 
the next thing of note that really happened, I was, uh, I had turned 11. Uh, I had gained quite a bit of weight because I wasn't able to exercise that much. And I remember, I will probably remember this moment until the day I die. I was in the upstairs shower and I was just, you know, taking a shower, normal kid stuff. And the conditioner was on the floor of the shower. So when I bent over to pick it up off the ground, I happened to sneeze. And something about sneezing while being bent over, I guess, it, it was some of the worst pain I had ever experienced in my life. And I ended up screaming and I toppled so hard out of the shower out of the shower that I fell tore the shower curtain out of the wall and curled up inside it on the bathroom floor um sobbing and gasping for air um it felt like somebody had taken a hammer to my back and I just couldn't breathe and I was terrified my parents came rushing in my brother was standing in the doorway trying to figure out what to do and eventually they calmed me down enough that I was breathing stable, um, that my breathing stabilized rather, I can grammar, but <laughs> they kind of realized that whatever was going on with my spine wasn't getting better. So we referred to the doctor again and they scheduled me for my first ever MRI. And that is a story in and of itself. So again, if you want to hear that story, I can tell it another time. Um, so I have this MRI done, and they come back with some results. Now, I'm going to preface these results were wrong. Um, these results do not reflect my actual condition. But at the time, what I was told was that I had scoliosis, and that I had seven, what they called seven distinct spinal deformities. I know now that those were seven spinal fractures. Um, so I was in a lot of pain. Um, and I was reset in my physical therapy for, I, I was sent months back, but I was still able to walk. Um, I was very slow, I was very awkward, I still had a bit of a limp, and I could definitely not run. So, the not running becomes relevant when it comes to the 4th of July uh, of that same year. I don't remember the year off the top of my head, and I don't want to do math. Um, I'm 18 now. I was 11 then. Do the math. <laughs> you do the math. I don't want to. Um, but the 4th of July that year, we drove up to my grandparents' house um, in Cottonwood, and we were going to celebrate it was going to be probably one of the bigger get-togethers because until that point we had never lived in a place where we could celebrate with my grandparents let alone with just a couple hours of a drive out of the way um we had always been a state away so we were having my uncle over my uncle's new girlfriend and her two kids um oh no her kids didn't come it was just her um at first uh, uh, my uncle and my dad's childhood friend, Jesse, um, his, uh, his girlfriend, I think, might have been there. I don't remember. Uh, his daughter was there, my cousin was there, my brother, uh, my grandparents, and my parents. So, pretty huge, full house of people. Uh, <laughs> and... In the entryway of my grandmother's house is this large stretch of tile that leads between, like it's a, a hallway of sorts that leads into the kitchen, the living room, and my grandparents' bedroom. Now, my dad's friend, Jesse, his daughter, Emily, Emily and I did not get along at all. Um, we still don't really get along. Um, but Emily had suggested that we play a game of tag. 
and I had already tripped and stumbled outside earlier that day and I was really not into it and I was like you know I already can't run and we're not allowed to even run in the house even if I could so I decided I was going to sit it out while my cousin Emily and my older brother all started playing tag and running around the house much to the chagrin of everybody else in the household. Um, what ended up happening was I was walking across the rug through that tile entryway, hallway area, and I was walking, let's say, I was walking on the right side of the carpet, and my brother and my cousin go running by on the left side of the carpet, and because the carpet didn't have any rubber grips on the bottom, it slipped, and because they were moving faster, it slipped after them. Um... So it was, it was a bit of a disaster, and I fell. I fell, I crashed into the ground, and my vision went red. My left wrist and ankle were both broken in the fall, but my wrist wasn't broken as badly, so what I felt was mostly my ankle. I really didn't realize my wrist was broken until a couple hours later. Um... The pain was that intense in my ankle. And I was laying on the ground screaming and sobbing. I have a vague memory of being picked up and carried to the other room, but it's all kind of hazy. Um, my uncle and his girlfriend were both convinced that it had to have been just a sprain. Um, and when asked whether or not I wanted to go to an emergency room or to find a hospital nearby to go to, I insisted I did not want to go to the hospital. That was my mistake. I did not want to ruin the 4th of July, and so I didn't want to go to a hospital. <sighs> so, sorry if I get emotional throughout parts of this story. It is something that is very hard for me to talk about sometimes, but something that I feel necessary to share about me because it explains a lot about what I do and the way I believe. So, there's that. Um, <sighs> um, I, I went home with my family that night, a night early. Uh, we took my cousin with us and I spent the next couple of weeks recovering um, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, uh, the one we didn't visit, came down from Connecticut where she lived and she um, spent some time with us. And we kind of functioned on the idea that it was a sprain. And as such, I did the, the rice method, um, rest, ice, compression, and elevation, which are effective for a broken bone too and when I started to show signs that I was getting a little bit better because the fracture was healing um, because we assumed it was a sprain and not a break I was told that the next course of action would be to just start walking on it and that might have worked for a sprain but seeming it wasn't a sprain it hurt um, Walking on my broken ankle, I walked up and down flights of stairs. I walked through an entire house of wood and tile. There was no carpet anywhere in the house except for my brother's bedroom, which was literally the size of my closet. Like, he only chose to sleep there because it was the only room with carpet. So I was walking on hard floors with a broken ankle, and I didn't know it. Ugh, and... That caused me to fall down the stairs, um, which was really unfortunate, apparently. My brother <laughs> was, like, traumatized. I, I don't remember it at all, <laughs> but my brother really does, and he does not like the memory. So, what ended up happening, <laughs> I will vividly remember, probably forever, I went to go get a glass of milk, and... As I set, I turned to set the milk on the table, I set it down, turned back to close the fridge, and I heard this sickening crack. 
and my left ankle exploded in pain all over again. And I collapsed to the floor, screamed my head off, and my parents made an appointment immediately for me to see a doctor. So, I don't remember, I don't think we went to an ER because there wasn't an ER in town. Like, there was an urgent care, but I don't think it was really equipped to handle emergency x-rays. Like, this, maybe I was wrong, but for some reason or another, we made an appointment to go back to Flagstaff to have it x-rayed. We had it x-rayed, um, it was confirmed broken, and it was put in a cast. Um, I had asked them to also x-ray my left uh, wrist because I also suspected that it was broken and they told me no. Um, they told me that I was making it up and that there was no way that my wrist was actually broken. And so my wrist healed incorrectly. Um, so that's a bummer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I spent the next couple of weeks in that cast, and I was in a wheelchair um, because I couldn't use crutches because my arm hurt so bad that I couldn't handle it. My arm and with my pre-existing condition in my back, it was just too much. Crutches were too much, so they put me in a wheelchair. And to this day, I have not been consistently out of the wheelchair since. Um, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, it was at that point that things started to just kind of feel terrible. And I was in a lot of pain, and I was miserable, and even when I was told that I could take my broken ankle, like, my broken ankle should have been healed, so I was supposed to start walking in a boot, I couldn't. It hurt too badly. I ended up sleeping on my parents' floor most nights because it was so painful, I couldn't do it. So I was sleeping in my parents' room on a blown-up mattress on their floor because I, I was in so much pain that I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom by myself in the middle of the night. Um, and we tried telling the doctor, something is wrong, it's not healing. Um, will you please x-ray it again? Will you please tell us what's wrong? And they told us no. Um, they told us that we were crazy. They told me that I was making the pain up for attention. They told my mother that she was coddling me and that they should just kind of throw me in the deep end. And um, they, they belittled my mother and called me crazy or manipulative. And no one would help us. Um, luckily for us, a couple months go by and my dad gets a new job, um, so we move and we move to another t uh, another city, and we've we set up an appointment with a new primary care physician, and we have yet to see her, but we have an appointment set so that we can really maybe start to figure out why I'm in so much pain. Now, this isn't the end of that doctor screwing us over, however, um, because when we moved, she canceled our prescription for the wheelchair because she told us that we shouldn't need it anymore. Um, so I was forced to use a walker, and this proved to be really unfortunate. Um, my parents went to register me and my brother for school um, so that we could start going to school soon and <sighs> while my parents were gone my brother was in the next room playing video games um, and I went up to I went to stand to go to the bathroom and when I stood 
my left leg just, it made my ankle fracture look like a walk in the park. It snapped and I was standing there screaming and sobbing and my brother comes running out in a panic, scrambles for the house phone, calls my parents who can hear me screaming in the background and he doesn't know what to do and he's trying to figure out what's hurting and I'm screaming inarticulately at him and he has to help me sit down because I legitimately cannot sit down. It hurts so badly to stand but I can't bend my knee enough to sit down so he has to grab my leg um, just so I could sit down and it was agonizing. It was agonizing. My parents rush home and we go to see the pediatrician. We move up our appointment and she has us go in for emergency x-rays and we get the x-rays done and I'm feeling a little bit better now that everything's calmed down. I've just gotten my wheelchair in um, so I'm able to move again and my parents decide we're going to celebrate that news by going to Applebee's for dinner. Um, so we go to this Applebee's um, and we're all having so much fun. We're having such a great night. We come home and there are several messages on our machine. One of the messages is from the doctor's office telling us that the x-rays have been seen and that we should call back to get our results. And the next was the doctor insisting that we call back as soon as possible for the results. The next was the doctor giving us her home phone number um, and saying to call her as soon as we got the message. And the next was her calling from home to say that since we hadn't reached out uh, in a timely manner, she was just going to tell us so that she wouldn't have to waste her time telling us over a phone conversation um, so that we could just hear it on the answering machine. And she said, her bones are ghosting. And what that means is that you could see through my bones on an x-ray and that means that my bones are not dense enough. I was scared. Uh, I was really scared. I was curled up in the bathroom listening to her describe that my bone had broken clean through the thickest part of what is supposed to be the thickest bone in your body. And she says that she wants to send me to the hospital, to be admitted to the hospital. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to do this. And I told my parents, I'm not going. You can't make me go. I won't go. I don't want to go to a hospital. Hospitals are where people go to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to go to a hospital. And it took my brother come climbing into the bathroom and sitting in front of me telling me it's going to be okay, but I need you to go to the hospital and I will be with you the entire time. And it was only when my brother really kind of talked to me and said, you know, you're going to be okay, um, that I finally relented to going to the hospital. I remember... <laughs> I called one of my friends from the other city, one of the only friends I had, and I called her and I said, you know, I've only been here a week. I've only lived in this city a week. And I'm on my way to the hospital and I'm so scared. And that was the last time I ever talked to her. So the last thing she knows of me is that I went to a hospital and she never heard from me again. She probably thinks I'm dead. <laughs> Tiffany, if you are out there, I'm not dead. <laughs> um, we get to the hospital and they check me in and they have to give me my IV, which does not go well. 
Um, I was covered in bruises and my IVs kept rejecting and they had to fish for my veins because I was so terrified. I kept fighting the nurses and it was agonizing. And I have been, I, I have had experiences since then that have been scarier. But at that moment, I had never been more afraid in my entire life. Over the course of the next week that I was in the hospital recovering, I was on morphine. And over a hundred doctors from all over the world, from all walks of life, cycled through my room trying to figure out what was wrong with me and none of them could nobody had an answer i was a guinea pig in a room full of men and women in lab coats and i was terrified so it didn't go well. Um, after that, I ended up going to a rehab center uh, to recover and try to relearn how to walk, um, which was ultimately unsuccessful. I have not walked since. I have walked with the assistance of crutches or canes or walkers but never very far and never for long spans of time in the years since i have broken over 50 bones um what is basically happening um is that my bone density lowers by about two and a half points every year so to give you a little bit of um, an example for what that means um, there is something called a DEXA scale and this scale says that people who are a zero or a negative one on the scale are normal people who are a negative 3.25 to a negative 4.25 have osteoporosis. Um, the last results that I remember were, I want to say, negative 9.10. So I am, I am far, far worse than the old people you see in the commercials. And I'm only getting worse every year. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to be really sad. Um, I really am. I am grateful for this condition in a way because it has made me a stronger person by far. Um, it really, really has made me a better person. Um, they have tried several treatments, uh, they have tried several pill regimens, um, none of them have ever worked, uh, evidently. Um, they tried, I don't remember what it, it it's a variant on the bisphosphonate treatments, um, which are IV infusion treatments that basically trick your bones into thinking that they're broken. The problem with it is that it also causes you to be extremely sick and weak. And when I talk about it, the most common way to refer to it is I call it chemo because chemo is the closest possible thing I can relate it to. As a matter of fact, when I got these treatments, um, I got them 
once every two months for about a little less than a year. Um, so I got these treatments in the oncology ward sitting next to kids who are getting chemo. And I have a few stories from that, um, but they're all pretty sad. <laughs> so, I know this has been really long. Um, there is a little bit of hope that I will fill you guys in on. Um, right now, I am on a cycle of pills that is going to show, um, hopefully, how much calcium my body is growing. And the way they're going to do that is that this medication that I'm taking causes calcium in your bones to fluoresce. Um, so I'm going to take it uh, for a couple of days, not take it for a couple of for a couple of days, and then take it again for a couple more days. So what this will do is that they'll go in to my body and cut out a section of bone, which is terrifying, I know, and then they will hold it, uh, they will test it in a very certain way that I really don't fully understand, but basically, like tree rings, they will be able to tell how much calcium grew onto my bone in the time span that it took where I was off the meds. So the calcium that was brought to the table when I was on the meds will fluoresce, then there will be however, however much calcium uh, I got in the time between, and then another layer that will fluoresce. And that will tell them how much calcium my body makes and applies to my bones over a, a period of so many days. And that will tell them whether or not the problem is with calcium or with vitamin D. Um, it will also talk about whether or not it's a problem with absorption, um, and it's not going to be a permanent fix. Um, they're not going to magically come up with the solution for it, um, just because they're doing this test. Um, but what this does mean is that they can eliminate a good half of the playing field and they will be able to do genetic testing on the material from my bones. And that will hopefully help them come a little closer to what is making me sick. And there is so much to this story that I kind of had to gloss over because this is already a 30 minute video, but there is light at the end of the tunnel and I'm sorry if I got a little bit depressing now and then. There is hope and I am hopeful that I will eventually walk again and any of you guys who are going to be on this journey with me will hopefully see this journey come to its really satisfying ending or I guess new beginning. So with that in mind, uh, I have been Gabby. I will talk to you guys hopefully again soon and hopefully not this long next time and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, nighttime. Get some rest.